So this chapter of Bhagavad Gita is a, is a, is a very nice question by Arjuna. Chapter 17, text 1, I've been asked to give a class on this. So Arjuna is asking about this topic, you know, it's, it's sectarian belief. I, you know, what is it behind sectarian belief? Different faiths. What is faith? You know, what is faith and what is knowledge? You know. So, Prabhupada, so he come to give us knowledge based on Bhagavad Gita. He didn't come to uh, change Christians into Hindus or Muslims into Christians. Or he wasn't interested in that. He could understand that there must be some education to people at large so that they could live on this planet peacefully and cooperatively. He felt he was saving the world, actually. Otherwise, why would he go on a boat all across the Atlantic? So many heart, so many heart attacks. And why would he bother, you know? Just to take another branch of Hinduism to <laughs> to America. We've already got you know branches of this religion, that religion. Just another one, is it? Just another. Did Papa just come to give another another faith? You know, amongst the thousands and thousands. No, Prabhupada understood he, he had something substantial, not just a belief. He comes to give a, a science, just like maths. You know, talk about Arabic maths or French maths or this maths. And everyone knows two and two equals four. Five and five equals ten. So that was because, you know, it's been standardized all over the world. So there's a need for standard spiritual knowledge that everyone can relate to. You know, that can, people can unify around what we are. So therefore, Arjun is asking this question. This chapter has been delineated as divisions of faith. Chapter 17. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is inv invocation. We, we always say this. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uh, it means we are offering obeisances to Krishna. Vasudevaya. Vasudevaya is the name of Krishna. Mm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya You got some books so we can see? Anyone? You got on your phones? Mm -hmm. Okay, Arjuna Uvacha. Arjuna said, Yea, those who Shastra Vidim, the regulations of Scripture, Utsija, giving up, Yajante, worship, Shadaya, full faith. Anvitaha, possessed of. Tesha of them, Nishta, the faith, too, but Ka, what, Krishna, O Krishna, Sattvam, in goodness, Aho, or else, Rajaha, in passion, Tamaha, in ignorance. Translation of purport, by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada King. Arjuna inquired, O Krishna, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of Scripture but worship according to their own imagination? Are they in goodness, 
in passion or in ignorance. Please repeat. Arjuna inquired, O oh Krishna, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of Scripture, but worship according to their own imagination? Are they in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance? Purport. In the fourth chapter, 39th verse, it is said that a person faithful to a particular type of worship gradually becomes elevated to the stage of knowledge and attains the highest perfectional stage of peace and prosperity. Okay, let's check it out in the fourth chapter, 39th verse. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Just a translation. A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Papa writes in the purport, Such knowledge in Krishna consciousness can be achieved by a faithful person who believes firmly in Krishna. One is called a faithful man who thinks that simply by acting in Krishna consciousness he can attain the highest perfection. This faith is attained by the discharge of devotional service and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, which cleanses one's heart of all material dirt. Over and above this, one should control the senses. A person who is faithful in Krishna and who controls, faithful to Krishna and controls the senses, can easily attain perfection in the knowledge of Krishna consciousness without delay. <coughs> so, probably refers to this verse. In the fourth chapter, 39th verse, it is said that a person faithful to a particular type of worship gradually becomes elevated to the stage of knowledge attains the highest perfectional stage of peace and prosperity. In the 16th chapter, it is concluded that, that one who does not follow the principles laid down in the scriptures is called an asura, demon. And one who follows the scriptural injunctions faithfully is called a deva or demigod. Now, if one with faith follows some rules which are not mentioned in the scriptural injunctions, what is his position? This doubt of Arjuna is to be cleared by Krishna. Are those who create some sort of God by selecting a human being and placing their faith in him, worshipping him in goodness, passion or ignorance? Two such persons attain the perfectional stage of life. Is it possible for them to be situated in real knowledge and elevate themselves to the highest perfectional stage? To those who do not follow the rules and regulations of the scriptures, but who have faith in something and worship gods and demigods and men and men attain success in their effort. Arjuna is putting these questions to Krishna. So, if you don't mind, I want to hear what Krishna says. <laughs> okay. Okay, takes two. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Trivida Bhavati Shraddha Dehinam Sa Shraddha Sadpiki Rajasi Chaiva Tamasi Chaiti Tamshinu. Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, According to the modes 
of nature acquired by the embodied soul, one's faith can be of three kinds, in goodness, in passion, or in ignorance. Now hear about this. Purple. Those who know the rules and regulations of the scriptures, but out of laziness or indolence, give up following these rules and regulations, are governed by the modes of material nature. According to their uh, previous activities in the mode of goodness, passion or ignorance, they acquire a nature which is of a specific quality. The association of the living entity with the different modes of nature has been going on perpetually since the living entity is in contact with material nature. He acquires different types of mentality according to his association with the material modes. But this nature can be changed if one associates with a bona fide spiritual master and abides by his rules and the scriptures. Gradually, one can change his position from ignorance to goodness or from passion to goodness. The conclusion is that blind faith in a particular mode of nature cannot help a person become elevated to the perfectional stage. One has to consider things carefully with intelligence in the association of a bona fide spiritual master. Thus one can change his position to a higher mode of nature. Omaganati Mandasya, Gananjana Salakaya, Chakshura Militam Jaina Tasme, Shri Guru Venama, Shri Chaitanya Manovistam, Sapitam Yena Bhutalin, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Tadasis Papadantikam, Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadatha, Shri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari So according to Bhagavad Gita Daivi Yashaguna Mai Mama Maya Durachaya this material nature composed of the three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance is very difficult to overcome. But one who has surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. So this is Krishna speaking in the seventh chapter about the modes of nature. So, in Bhagavad Gita it describes these modes and how a living being, the antimaterial particle, is conditioned. So this is actually science. It's not talking about any belief or any particular faith. It's talking about how we can classify consciousness, people's consciousness into different characteristics, by give, analyzing different characteristics. Um, there's another verse, Dumanav, Dumanavriyate Vanya, uh, that uh, a smoke, Itadasha Malenacha, Itadvena, uh, there's a verse which says, uh, as, as a fire is covered by smoke, as a mirror is covered by dust, as the embryo is covered by the womb, so the living entity is covered by different degrees of lust. Avatam jnanam etena jnaniya nichevainam. The man's pure consciousness is covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust, which is never satisfied, which burns like fire. So the, this is these are different degrees of lust, the modes of ignorance, uh, passion and goodness. And uh, 
Pavel explains in, in his uh, purport to the Bhagavad Gita, in which sometimes you know, Prabhupada speaks that on those early, on the happening record, is it? Happening record. He says that, uh, that uh, the transcendental vibration established by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamad is a sublime method for reviving our Krishna consciousness. As living, as living spiritual souls, we are originally Krishna conscious, but due to our association with matter since time immemorial, our consciousness now polluted by the uh, material atmosphere. The material atmosphere in which we are now living is called maya or illusion. Maya means that which is not. And what is that illusion? The illusion is that we're all trying to be the lords of material nature, when in fact we're under the grip of our stringent laws. So it's interesting, we're all trying to be the lords we're under, under the grip of our stringent laws. Those words are related, Lord L-O-R-D, L-O-R-D-S, and Lords L-A-W-S. I'm not a, you know, an into etymology or anything like that, but you can see Papa's pun is there. When a servant artificially tries to imitate the all-powerful master, that is called illusion. In this polluted concept of life, we're all trying to exploit the resources of material nature. But actually, uh, we're becoming more and more entangled in her complexities. So, so Papa is talking about a state of consciousness. So if you, if you look around you, and you just look on the streets of New York, you'll see that we're all under the grip of different modes of nature. <laughs> and uh, especially on Saturday night, <laughs> you know, we're out to exploit the material nature to the max. <laughs> And, uh, but material nature is so heavy, you know. We have to go down into the underground, into the subway. And that way in London we call it underground, the tube. We have to go down these dark tunnels, it's very dirty and noisy and hot. And uh, you can see we're under the grip of the material nature. We're certainly not free. But we can move. When we came up, the two, we saw there was a park with some kind of greenery and all the, the, the creepers were going around the railings. I looked inside, there was some, some pathway inside. So I was thinking, hey, it's a bit of goodness, a little bit of you know, desire for goodness, nature, freedom from this mode of ignorance in the city. Baba said modern society is advanced in the mode of ignorance and passion. Whereas the countryside, more in the mode of goodness. But even in the countryside, what do you see? You see greenery. And who are those people? Your Talbe Naga and Garba. They're, they're like the embryos in the womb, in a tree's body. If you have a tree's body, if you're like an embryo in the womb, very, very little understanding of where you are, what you are. Maybe after seven months, you start to kick and uh, feel discomfort. But up to that point, you know, you're, you're pretty well unconscious. And plants and animals, uh, but not, especially plants, fungi, you know, algae, they're living beings. <laughs> <laughs> the, the entities. Like if we it's analyzing, making a science, you know. This is what's so wonderful about Bhagavad Gita. It's not a sectarian thing. It's um, it's analytical. It's not syncretic. Modern science, syncretic. We try and accumulate so many things, speculations, try and understand the absolute truth. And, and it's always changing, we never come to a conclusion. Whereas 
Bhagavad Gita is syncretic. It's spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's a whole complete system of knowledge of what we are. But it does relate to our inductive experience. It's like uh, everyone knows. You know, we've, we've changed our body from childhood to youth to old age. Everyone's had a baby's body, child's body, uh, a youth's body, adult's body, and so on. Change our, but we're the same. Everyone's experienced. We're the same person that we were when we were a baby. I remember when I was in my mother's arms or my sister's lying on my sister's lap. Papa says, I remember when I was a child, two years old, I was lying on my sister's lap and she was knitting. She was knitting. And then Papa says, and this is a conversation in Tokyo, Papa says, I remember when there was a big kirtan in my house, father's house, and I was, I was, my eyes were just up to their knees. I was so small. I was just looking at their knees, and they must have been dancing, singing. So, <clears throat> we're the same, the body's changed. This is a fact. So, but who can realize that? Can a plant realize that? Can a plant get out of the mode of ignorance? It's creeping around the railings, you know, grass is growing under our feet, the tree. Prabhupada was standing under the tree in Tompkins Square Park, chanting Hare Krishna. So that tree was very fortunate. <laughs> Prabhupada was chanting under that tree. So all of us are, uh, are conditioned. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains in the seventh chapter uh, that there's two kinds of energy. Bhumi, Apanalo, Vayu, Kamanu, Puri, Avich. Sorry if this is very elementary to those regulars reading Prabhupada's books. Who knows? It's good to hear the same thing, be reminded of the basic things. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. They are my separated material energies. Beyond that, there's another energy of mine. There's all the living beings. Aparyama, Chastramyam, Prakritim, Vidhi, Mepam, Jiva, Bhuta, Mahabhava, Yedam, Dharyateja. They're trying to exploit this material nature. So, it's coming back to what this other verse did, about the different grades of nature, of the most. Dumana abriyateva near, like smoke is covered by a fire, uh, uh, like a mirror is covered by dust, and uh, the, the child is covered by the womb. So the child covered by the womb is like the mode of ignorance. And the dust uh, covering a mirror is something like, well, any suggestion? And the, this is an example to help us understand. The dust is covered by mirror. You can't see your face properly. Mirror is covered by dust. You can't see your face properly. What's a, an example of which entities, which living beings? Animals, moving creatures. I mean, plants are so stuck in the, with their roots, they can't even move. Can you imagine? Standing still for a long time, it's just torture, you know. Everyone wants to move, travel. As a whole travel business is based on the fact that we love to move. The plants can't move. So ignorance of the plants are deeply in the mode of ignorance. Consciousness is hardly developed. Even if you break off a branch, even if you break off a leaf, if you, you know, chop up a cabbage, who cares, you know. Everyone's talking about becoming vegan because protect the cows. But what about the soybeans? The cruelty to soybeans, making a <laughs> <laughs> and everything, all the vegetables you're eating. Isn't that cruel? Actually, not so cruel because the conscience is so low. But it is. Some, I mean, it's, 
Yeah, do you know Jagadish Chandra Bose? Prabhupada, he was a contemporary of Prabhupada in Calcutta. He uh, did research into plants' consciousness. He put these sensitive sensors on the leaves of the plants. He had potted plants in one room and um, in flower pots. One guy came into the room and cut the other two of the plants down. There was one plant living. So the plants were cut down, of course. They just, the sensors showed on the, how do you say, on the thing, they just went crazy, you know, with pain. So then they had a line of people coming through, a uh, queue of people walking through the same room. And uh, the plant didn't react, the plant that survived didn't react. Didn't react. But when that person who had cut the other plants down came through the room, <laughs> the plant just freaked out. He could understand. So the consciousness is is there in plants, it's obvious, but quite undeveloped. But then animals we see are more developed. And there's some nice books by Dr. Sahadev Das. Wonderful, wonderful stories about how animals, uh, almost human consciousness. There's one story I, I like, it was in one zoo, I don't know where the zoo was, but that little baby fell into the pit where the gorillas were. Mm. The gorillas were down there in the pit. And the little baby, you know, little baby's like a rubber ball. It doesn't, can't harm a little baby too much. And fell on the, on the floor. And I was like, what's a gorilla gonna do? <laughs> it's a true story. And then the, the, the mother gorilla picked up the baby and brought it back and gave to the human beings. Whew. Everyone was so amazed, you know. There's animals there, there's so many stories. There's, you want to hear another story? Yes. <laughs> there was one babysitter, one babysitter, she was babysitting, right? And there was one baby, you know, she's supposed to be looking after the baby. And in the room there was a parrot, and the owner of the house used to let this parrot sit on a perch and like fly around, okay? So the babysitter went to the bathroom, to the toilet. And at the exact time, the baby swallowed something. I started to go blue in, blue in the face, choking. And then the parrot, uh, parrot was watching, and she flew to the bathroom door. Baby, 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 baby. Like this. And so the baby sister came out and uh, saved the baby. It was in the local newspapers. So they call it in the local newspaper. There's another one. Want to hear another one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there was a very obese lady. She could hardly move. You know, she's just like 200 kgs. She's lying there, you know. And uh, she, her, she had a pet pig. <laughs> she had a pet pig, and the, the pig was just like almost as fat as she was. <laughs> and then, you know, this pig had never been outside the yard. I mean, I don't know how, what the yard smelled like, but it must have been pretty terrible. But she had a heart attack. Oh. And she was like, you know, she couldn't do anything. She, she couldn't even ring the phone or anything. She was, she was dying, you know. And the pig broke through the yard, the, the, the wooden yard, and went out onto the street and stopped the traffic. It stopped the traffic. And somehow or other stopped. And then the people rushed in and saved her. <laughs> so you can see, <laughs> there's more stories. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, so you can see by association with, with human beings, anim uh, animals can get some kind of human feelings developed. But a human being is like the uh, human being is like the uh, mode of it, it, it is a tendency for the mode of goodness, which is like Papa says by manipulation of the smoke, the fire can be made to burn. The fire of Krishna con God consciousness, it can be made to burn. <coughs> So this is, uh, that original desire to lord it over material nature, what the Papa calls lust. It's a, it's a, uh, Papa explains that our original consciousness is to love Krishna. Man's pure consciousness is covered by his eternal love. That love is turned into lust, then when we forget Krishna. In other words, our loving propensity is misdirected into material uh, illusion. We think we are the enjoyer, so our loving propensity is perverted in different ways. So you, you may have seen those pictures in Bhagavad Gita uh, of going back to transmigration again, changing body. That uh, oh, it's quite graphic. People think it's a bit extreme. Where's the pictures? Huh? No pictures, no? Huh? Welcome to the pictures. There we go. Maybe they're not here in this book. This is the old pictures. But they are, you know. Krishna says, Yam Yam Vapi Smaram Bhavam Chajan Chevakali. According to one's consciousness, one's developing a new kind of body. Which is actually very reasonable. When you think about it, how you know, in terms of computer IT, you know, we just have like digital pixels, and they form a huge program for a skyscraper. So it, it's it's software. It's like virtually in the mind, but with that software, you can create a huge skyscraper. So the time of death, the, the, the software, if you like, not exactly software, but the program, if you like, separates from the gross body. And then according to the laws of nature, you get a short term chakras, but a new set of senses, new set of eyes, and a new environment. So you, like if you're in the heavy, in the mode of passion, passion and you develop a human form of life, and you may take birth in America, more, more, more in the mode of passion. Or if you're taking, you know, not to hurt anyone's feelings, you may take birth in Africa. And there's all varieties of human beings. But it's a very uh, privileged form of life. Because there are scriptures, in Shastra and Vidya Muchicha. Uh, Shastra means scriptures. There's information, uh, as you say, <clears throat> from beyond this syncretic form of knowledge, inductive knowledge. There's information coming from outside the conditioned state. Just like Papa gives another example. Just like if you're tied up with a rope, if somebody breaks into your house and ties you up with a rope, what are you going to do? Chew your way through the rope? <laughs> your teeth will fall out first. <laughs> and then you're helpless, you know, they can do anything to you. you can, I wouldn't like to mention what they can do to you if you're tied up with a rope. But you're helpless. And only if somebody comes from outside and cuts the rope and frees you, then you're free. So this is the uh, position of, of a, a spiritual master like Srila Prabhupada. You know, 65, 66, 66. I don't like to look back in the past, actually. I, I have some reservations about, has anyone seen the latest Hare Krishna movie? You know, personally, I find it wonderful. 
amazing. See Prabhupada and hear what he said. But very nostalgic. Nostalgic, you know, it's like looking back in the past. But what about the future, you know? We have this knowledge at our disposal that this whole civilization is off track, completely off track. It's based on my bodily, false bodily identification. I am Hindu, I am Muslim, I am Christian, I am this, I am that, I am American, I am British, I am male, I am female. It's completely illogical actually, unreasonable. It's actually mad. It's actually, a civilization is mad. All the different kinds of madness, goodness, passion, and ignorance. The devotional service that Prabhupada has given us is so beyond any of these modes of material nature because it's directly connected with Krishna. Krishna says, one who engages in devotional service at once transcends the modes of material nature. Okay, you may be, you know, you may work in any kind of uh, activity in human society, maybe an administrator, you may be a laborer, you may be a housewife, you may be a uh, businessman. But once it's connected with Krishna, I probably call it dovetailing, then you go above the most and one understands, I'm not this body. I'm, a, a, I'm an eternal living entity. I was never born, I will never die. And I... I have the, how do you say, death, my own destiny in my own hands. And now, I'm, what am I destined to do now? Birth, old age, disease and death. Everyone is destined to that. And who's doing anything about it? What government of this world is doing anything about the basic problem? We have to grow old, we have to, have to die and we have to have diseases. Where is the university? Where is the college talking about these things? It's so obvious when you hear, when you hear Prabhupada lecturing that we're not this body. But who's teaching it? And who's going to teach it? Now it's like, you know, you know, after Prabhupada's come and gone, and that we have so much work to do to change the civilization, to change the civilization. It's going on, you know. Um, and it seems to be going on in the same way. But there's so much to be done in terms of distributing this knowledge. Particularly the Maha Mantra. When I first read one of Prabhupada's articles, I couldn't make head or tail of it. It's just beyond me. I was just too much ignorance and passion and speculation, you know. On the mental platform, trying to figure out what is this, what is this, what is this. But after chanting Hare Krishna and taking some food offered to Krishna, then it became clear. So the Prophet wanted a revolution, and from here he started a revolution. Twenty, was it? Twenty-two second I mean? Twenty-six. Twenty-six second I mean. The revolution started from here. And someone said, oh, well, well if the landlord and the lease comes up and then he knocks the place down. What will happen to 26? That's not the point. We're not no nostalgic historians trying to make a museum for Prabhupada. You know, and, oh yeah, Prabhupada came 65. See, I uh, see the old film. We've got to take up, change the world. We've got to do something. Hmm. And I'm sure everyone's trying the best they can. But that, that's just my mood. And uh, the urgency Prabhupada had when he came here, it was so urgent, you know. I don't want to go back into the old Prabhupada Leela, Leela Mitra stories, but he ran into Mukunda and Janaki's room, they were lying in bed, watching some cartoon. He just be <laughs> some LSD freak had gone crazy where he was staying, and he was running out onto the street. So he went to, he happened to know Mukunda's no address, I don't know how, I've forgotten how he knew. And, then, and he looked at the TV and probably said, this is nonsense. <laughs> Again, because nowadays people can't sleep unless the TV's on, you know. Isn't it true? Because people can't sleep unless the TV's on. 
So from this is nonsense. What kind of color of pen? So what is it? Swami Jean, what is it? Uh, I, I, I've got to have somewhere to stay. Can you find me somewhere to stay? There's no, I don't have any place. And they love, you know, they're attracted to Swami. That's what Prabhupada had so much uh, devotion that he also loved all living beings, even hippies. It's the point of loving Krishna, just like watering the root of a tree, all the leaves and branches automatically satisfy. So by loving Krishna, by, by directing our love to Krishna, automatically all living beings satisfied, including all the ec ecological problems, as ocean pollution, the animal rights, you know, the this rights, that rights, Mexican rights. There's this, everything will be solved if we just become Krishna conscious. It's obvious, actually. We water the root of the tree, the branches, the leaves will become satisfied. Or by putting, now if it, if I take the I take the samosa or I take the porridge and stick it in my ear, will that be good? <laughs> Put porridge in your ear, come out the other side. Or you put porridge up your nose? No. That's modern civilization, mode of passion. No knowledge. Because they can't discriminate between matter and spirit. So nationalism is the main thing. Every nation, oh, my nation is best. England is best, you know, this is best, my party is best. It's all childish civilization. Because it doesn't go beyond this, the bodily uh, concept of life. So Krishna consciousness is a science. And uh, it's up to us to, to uh, take this responsibility. And Lord Chaitanya said, especially those born in the Indian culture, so those who have this contact, maybe from different ancestors, um, but it, you know, if Indians not going to do it, and they, when they didn't, Prabhupada came to America, because we all actually came. Prabhupada said that when Parasharam was killing the Kshatriyas. Then the Kshatriyas fled, and they fled all over the world. Came to Europe, they came to Ireland, and there they came to America. So this is an Aryan stock, if you like. So by hearing from a bona fide spiritual master like Prabhupada, then we can be you know, enlivened to do something before we have to quit this body. And after we quit this body, where are we going to go? And, and the Sankirtan movement is the best way to do, to be focused on Krishna. It's uh, evangelical, if you like. It's missionary. You know, we want to give people something valuable. Just like if people have AIDS, if you have the, or you have cancer, if someone discovers a cure for cancer, every day you, re you read something, oh, I discovered a cure for cancer. But then cancer is going on and on. But if you really discover the cure for cancer, then you don't keep it to yourself. So this whole material world is a big cancer arranged by Krishna. It's for, for cancerous consciousness. We're not fit to stay with Krishna. We don't love him anymore. We only, you know, we, we want to be Krishna. We want to exploit. Uh, tomorrow is Ra Radhasmi, birthday of uh, Radharani. So we all want our own Radharani, isn't it? I saw, I saw in, in the tube, when, in the uh, subway, uh, sitting opposite me, there was a boy and girl. And the girl had a, just like that picture of Radharani, I don't know who painted it. There was a picture of Krishna and Radharani, and, and Radharani has her head on Krishna's lap like this. And she was sitting just like that. And, and, and she had her hand on his knee, and he had his hand on her knee. Very sweet. But where are you going to go in your next life? I mean, this is the obvious question. Is it, is it sectarian? Is this is some, you know, blind faith? That, say, Papa gives the example 
I have uh, some clothes, right? And they get holes in it, and it, it's falling apart. Then naturally, you think, I'd better go to the shop and buy a, a new set, a new, some more, a new shirt, a new set of, a new set, p pair of pants, because these are worn out. A new set of shoes. So, you know, that's intelligence. It's a plan ahead. So human beings are supposed to plan ahead, but nobody is. They're only planning how to eat, sleep, mate, and defend out there. Most, I'm not saying well, everybody, but it's, you know, generically, tendency amongst everybody to think in terms of my spot life, how I, you know, but not to go beyond when I die, but to be satisfied like animals, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So anyway, so this is um, Krishna Consciousness. And uh, open to questions now, please. Hare Krishna. Oh, we have a question over here. This is Jaya Amar. <laughs> Hi. 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 Hare Krishna. Thank you. I I have a question. Um, how okay in this society it seems that for women there's the expectation that you get married and have children and that that's um, supposedly that's supposed to help you later in life um, because you make your children may help to take care of you when you're old. But if you don't have children, then you, for those people, it seems to me that they may worry about their old age more. And um, I was just wondering what your thoughts were that, like, if you could give some advice, perhaps, because I feel like I've been struggling with that. Um, because I, I'm not married, and I don't have children. And sometimes I feel like I'm not falling into like the cultural expectations or societal expectations. And it leads me to worry about my life. Yeah. Yeah, but the first thing is, are we, are we woman? Are we man, are we woman? Prabhupada is pointing, Prabhupada, you know, he gave lecture, he, he didn't see men and women. He saw spirit souls. So the, the expectation of mo modern society, <coughs> and ex the materialistic culture, we'll see in that way. But Krishna consciousness is transcendental. So that's the first thing, is to maintain our identity beyond this temporary body by chanting Hare Krishna, doing devotional service. And that's our first duty, to maintain our, our Krishna consciousness. Once we forget that, then, we, then, then who knows our future? We, we are eternal spirit souls. We've never been born, we'll never die. Now you have a woman's body. It may be good, it may be bad. But uh, if you become Krishna conscious, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Men, in Papa's eyes, men and women are equal. Because they both have opportunity for Krishna consciousness. Marriage, that's a convenience, because in Krishna consciousness, that's also a convenience. To say, if a woman has children, she needs protecting. So Prabhupada encouraged marriage. Maybe she, they married right here. Right? The first couples that Prabhupada married are right here. 
because it's convenient. You know, by, by the female body needs protecting to reproduce the species. <laughs> so that's, that's Krishna's arrangement. But that's not the purpose of, of Krishna consciousness, to reproduce the species. The purpose of Krishna consciousness is to spread Krishna consciousness so that people get out of birth and death. So we all have to, Lord Chaitanya said, Jari Deki Tahe Kaha Krishna Upadesh, Amara Agya Guru Hanataidesh. Whoever you meet, wherever you are, you give them the instruction to Bhagavad Gita. And this way you become Guru and deliver the people in this land. So Baba never said, you, you know, a female body can't preach in Krishna consciousness. So it's for everyone, it's open for everyone. And that's how this movement started. In London particularly, we, the example of Shamasundra and Malati and Janaki and Mukunda and uh, Rudas and Yamuna, they really struggled. I'm reading their books. Anyone seen that book by Shamasundra? Chasing Rhinos with the Swami? Excellent. Amazing book. And you know, they had to really struggle. But there were a couple, three couples, man and wife, they had one, one, one of them had a child. Virtually penniless, and, but they were determined to spread Krishna consciousness. And they got the blessings of Prabhupada. And, and you know, far advanced in Krishna consciousness by association with a pure devotee. They, they sacrificed their lives to serve a pure devotee. They didn't care about anything else. They didn't care. That's all they cared about was serving Prabhupada. And they did miracles. No one else could do it. Big, big swamis, so-called renowned soldier of life. In the 30s, they came to London. And they, they had to go back. They couldn't you know, indent this civilization at all. But these three couples, married couples, they did so much. They were successful. And it's going on like that. I have some disciples, and they're, they're men and women, they're preaching wonderfully. Making new devotees, distributing books, opening new centers. So I don't see it's a disadvantage in Krishna consciousness to have a woman's body. It's actually very good. A woman's, a woman controls the man, actually. <laughs> so don't worry, I wouldn't just stay Krishna conscious, that's the thing. Make make a make your mission to go back to Godhead and take as many people with you as you can. And if you get help with a male body, that's great. If you don't, okay. But we have to do something. You know? Everyone's you know, where are they going in the next life? They don't know, they don't even care half the time. So we have to do something for Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya. Is that all right? Thank you. Next question, yeah. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. I uh, was thinking of something. So you said that being in the mold of ignorance is similar to like an embryo, right? Yeah. In the womb. Yeah, Krishna says, yeah. Yeah, so in a sense, isn't it, isn't it protective to be in the womb? Because you're, you're kind of you're kind of protected of those exterior whatever. And so in a sense, it could, it could be understood that in the mode of ignorance, you're kind of protected from, from the knowledge because when you're aware of the knowledge, then you have to then act on that knowledge, right? Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in many ways, in many ways, it's kind of true. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You know, and so what I'm saying is, is if you if you if you want to be an ignorant, I'm saying sometimes don't babies don't really want to come out. You know, <laughs> you just you know sometimes it's like no, I would rather stay here. You know where where things are okay. You know, even though it's really not, but you think it is. You know, and so I guess what I'm saying is is 
That's why we this, we require spiritual master, Omagana Timurandasya. We 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 our eyes are blinded with ignorance. And he forced open our eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. Because <laughs> actually we didn't want Krishna consciousness. Yeah, but when but Prabhupada moved on the scene and started giving us prasadam and Mahamantra. Yeah. And then we had to be responsible for our, exactly. for this knowledge. And this can be very difficult. But one thing is is certain, you know, that even the trees, the birds, the fishes, and all the creatures that are I can say subhuman, they're also suffering. You can see their suffering. If you observe animals and plants, and it's not that they don't have a fair share of suffering because they're in ignorance. In, in, you know, I, I, it always, when I'm, I spend a lot of time in Nepal and India. And, you know, when you see a dog, hit by a car, you know, it's not very pleasant. You know, just the sound of the dog getting run over by a car, it's not very pleasant. You're not enjoying it. It's, 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 what about the tree that's been cut down or burned? So they're all living entities that attach to their bodies and they're going through this excruciating uh, pain, which is not necessary for them. It's not necessary to be born in, in a woman's womb. I've heard that Shukadeva Goswami, he was a special case because he was a self-realized soul. He stayed in his mother's womb for 16 years. Is that right? And then he heard the Srimad Bhagavatam from it's spoken by his father uh, by his father yesterday and then he decided okay i'll take birth there's a reason to take birth otherwise he was he was fully equipped with mystic powers he could stay within the womb for as long as he liked but then he he, he decided to take birth and disseminate krishna consciousness because he out of compassion out of compassion for the living beings you see the, out of compassion to help people overcome birth, old age, disease, and death. Samsara dava nala. These are the prayers of a spiritual master. Samsara dava nala lita loka. Tranaya karunya ganaganatam. Praptasya kalyana gunana vasya. Andegaro shi charanarabinda. The spiritual master is receiving benediction from the ocean of mercy, Krishna. And just like a rain cloud pours water on the forest fire to extinguish it, so the spiritual mass extinguishing the blazing fire of material existence. So out of compassion, Lord Chaitanya come out and his Sampadaya has come, and Shiva Baba has particularly come. And it's gone, devotees have come, you have come, to, to pour water on the forest fire of people suffering. They don't know, even know they're suffering. This is really the darkest ignorance. They don't know their suffering. They don't even know there's an alternative, eternal blissful life uh, in Krishna Loka. You can become a gopi. You can live, live with Krishna in the spiritual world like Radharani. And uh, six Goswamis, I was just meditating on thinking about this verse. You know, how, how, this movement, Sankirtan movement, is Gopi Bhava. Baba said, Radharani is the chief. Tomorrow is Radhasmi. Is it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. so a, Radharani is the chief of the Gopis. And what's her mood? And, and the six Goswamis, they showed Chakra Tournament, Seshala, Mandana Pati. They gave up their big positions as ministers, as presidents, and as prime ministers. And they accepted, you know, just. Uh, simple cloth, uh, and in order to deliver the poor conditioned souls. Uh, that was what they did. They, they thought that this is real welfare work. So, you know, people need to be taught what, what is their real 
self-interest. Natevi du Svadikatami Vishnu, people don't know what's good for them. Prabhava Savada Buddha, they're mad. Nunam Prabhata Kurutevika, they don't know what's good for them. Just like, okay, your, your argument, they're happy, okay. You give a child a razor blade, will you give a child a razor blade? No, because they cut themselves. Yeah. So that people are just like children and they're cutting themselves. How can we just stand by and watch them and say, ah, oh, they're happy. They're happy, birth, old age, disease and death. We can't, you know, Maraj, we can't that tolerate happy. that. I don't mean they're happy. I mean <laughs> that sometimes, sometimes you can be in the, in the, in the ignorance and not really notice where you are. Yeah, and, but that's why the spiritual master someday, comes. Yeah, someday your spiritual master comes and wakes you up, yeah. and you realize where you are. You know, and that is the that is where the the heart is because now you see what's going on. You know, and now you have to like no, take, because you got that pill. You, and, no, you're going back to Godhead. What's the problem? It's, it's is that, just you're just like you've got no. something to do. When I was a, when I was a child, I used to go to my mother, mommy. What shall I do now? <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever used to do that to me? Mummy, how shall I play now? What shall I do now? And then your mother says, oh, okay, do this too. So probably, you know, he's telling us how to play. Play in this Sangatown movement. Do something. Go back to God. You don't belong here. This is not your home. Just go get out of here quick and <laughs> get out of here by doing something for Krishna. Now you've got the knowledge. Okay, it's brilliant knowledge because you, you, we know we're going to be free from birth, old age, disease, and death. Now we can take millions of people with us. Mm. This, is proper, this is Prabhupada's mood. Let's do something. Now, we, we, you know, whatever we do, in Krishna's service, it's permanent bank account. It's a Krishna's bank account. It's never lost. Krishna will always remember what we do for him. It's not a burden. Why is it a burden? Is it a burden to, if someone's dying of starvation, you know, give them some food? People are dying of spiritual starvation. And we have food. Prasadam, man, yeah, what's Prasadam? <laughs> There's going to be Prasadam tonight. Yes, yeah? Uh -huh. So that's good, good news. <laughs> we need it after all this. <laughs> so yeah, we've got that. It's a nice job, dancing, telling, and singing. What's the problem? <laughs> We're going to have Harry Nam tomorrow. Are you going to come with us? Where is the Harry Nam tomorrow? To be confirmed. Mm -hmm. You mean it's like, you know, you take part in this movement. We're, we're already back home. They asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, uh, <coughs> when we're on Harinam Sankirtan, if they drop the bomb on us, what will happen? <laughs> you know, Putin drops an A-bomb on New York, and we're doing Harinam on Fifth Avenue. What's going to happen to us? <laughs> but Prabhupada said, Father says you start the kirtan here in the material world and you end in the Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> <laughs> what to worry about? Oh, Next question, please. Anyone anyone else? One, one, yeah. One, one, two. I guess. Uh, people who um, are not in in spiritual consciousness. Can you speak up, please? I can't get you. For people who are not immersed in Krishna's consciousness, yeah. spiritual consciousness, even we have free will, and uh, we are, um, we have to make uh, decisions about our life all the time. Uh, then it is very hard uh, to uh, live your life. Um, in a balanced state uh, when you don't have the, the, the consciousness, spiritual guidance. And uh, that is what is causing the world to be in such a chaos and uh, 
and how nature is being destroyed by man and all that. It's because of a lack of uh, God's guidance and because, um, you know, going to the Christian um, scriptures, uh, the paradise was lost. So before we were in bliss, we didn't know what was evil, what was good. Talking about what she was referring to about being in the womb and being protected. Uh, but then the moment they, they ate from the fruit from that tree, they lost that according to that tradition. So in a way, now we're all born to having to know how to follow uh, the best decisions, but not everybody is uh, um, as uh, blessed as we are to have Krishna in our life. So I think that's, that's how we see most of the world suffering the way they are. And how animals, what you were describing, uh, are being mistreated and trees are being cut and all that. So the free will without God, it is hard, what she was saying. It is, uh, it is a very difficult uh, uh, challenge because you don't have the guidelines to, to follow unless you uh, inspire by Krishna. I think we should be very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, you're completely right. Yeah, we, we, we're misusing our free will in ignorance of passion or goodness. So that, that's why your papa had to be aggressive, you know. Papa was uh, aggressive, actually. And he just brought trunks of Bhagavatams. And he was depending on Krishna, uh, and he was interfering actually. But he was. Krishna made an arrangement that there was a generation of young people who were fed up with with misusing their free will. Actually, I wrote a song. <laughs> you want to hear the song? <laughs> I don't know, I, I never thought I'd sing this before Prabhupada. Should I sing it? Yes. Which I'll just sing one or two verses. I mean, I agree totally with what you're saying. So, what you said was really good. So, you know, we have to somehow or other teach people how to use their free will. Give them a choice. If they're never given the choice to be Krishna conscious, then they're, then they're just crying in the dark.